coconut cherry crisp. Perfect for a weeknight in the summer when it's just a little bit cool outside. It is full of beautiful cherry flavor and yummy, yummy, crispy coconut crumble topping. Hi everyone, my name is Janelle and you're watching Everyday Jane where I make videos on simple living with a focus on delicious homemade food, which brings us to today's coconut cherry crisp which is the perfect thing to make on a busy weeknight. So I can't wait to show this to you. It's a really easy uh, recipe and a staple in my kitchen and I hope it'll be a staple in yours as well. So let's get started. So into the bowl goes one cup of old fashioned rolled oats. Not the quick cooking stuff or anything like that, just regular plain rolled oats. Then we're going to add one third cup of all purpose flour. So next we're going to add in some coconut. This is shredded unsweetened coconut. Don't use the sweetened stuff because we're gonna add sugar in here separately. Next we're gonna sweeten it with some brown sugar, one of my favorite sweeteners because of that extra bit of molasses. And we're gonna put a third a cup of brown sugar right in the bowl. So that's a third. Next to the salt, which is such an important ingredient even in slightly sweeter things like this crisp um, because it really helps to bring out that flavor. So that is about a quarter teaspoon of salt. Adjust according to your liking, of course. Okay, so we're gonna mix this up. In this coconut cherry crisp, <laughs> guess what kind of um, fat we're gonna be putting into this? It's gonna be coconut oil, of course, and I've got my coconut oil right in here, and you want to use unrefined coconut oil. I usually have both refined and unrefined coconut oil in my pantry most times. Um, unrefined is going to give you a strong coconut flavor, so that's really important if you actually like that strong coconut flavor in your crisp. All right, so let's mix all of this together. And I really love this crisp um, in the summertime because we're not using you know, some of the typical, you know, warming spices like cinnamon. We're using something lighter to flavor this, which is coconut, right? And that is just, for me at least, so typical of a delicious summer treat. So once all of that is sort of incorporated throughout the whole mix, you can sort of see the texture that we're looking for, right? It's not supposed to be like a cookie dough or anything. You're gonna still see things sort of crumbling apart and that's completely okay. So once your texture sort of looks like that, you can put this aside and we can work on the easiest filling you've ever seen. <laughs> All right, so let's first talk about your baking vessel of choice. You can use a pie dish, you can use a casserole dish, whatever you'd like, but I'm going to be using this really deep um, baking dish. As you can see, it's really tall, and that's because I really like a thick layer of crumble and a thick layer of cherries. <laughs> so it really just depends on your personal preference. So I've got a bowl here full of cherries, and this is frozen cherries. Buy a brand of frozen cherries that you really like to eat. <laughs> this one is our personal favorite, and I, I really recommend that you try a cherry first. Oh man, these cherries are so good. They're so sweet. So find good cherries, and they can be fresh as well. It doesn't have to be frozen. But I find this is probably the most economical and easiest way to put cherries in a baked dish where you don't have to pit them. So to these cherries, I'm gonna add three ingredients. The first is salt, the next one is honey, and then lastly, we're going to have some sort of thickener. And in this case, we're using cornstarch. So let's start with the salt. I'm just gonna do a quick sprinkling, but if you want a measurement, it's probably about an eighth of a teaspoon. And then I'm going to add the honey. Because this is so sweet, I'm really not gonna add a lot. Um, if you want your filling to be like pie filling where it's really thick and oozing, then using sugar really helps thicken it up. Um, but I don't really mind a little bit of a runnier filling. So I'm just gonna eyeball this. I'm thinking about two tablespoons of honey. The next, I'm going to add about two tablespoons of cornstarch in my little container. Unfortunately, it looks a little bit like, more like a tablespoon and a half, but that's fine. As I mentioned, I don't really need this filling to be all that thick. And all that's left to do is mix it up and throw it in our baking dish. So as you can see, the honey gets really, really hard because the cherries are frozen. Or it's all gonna come together in that baking dish while it's baking. So don't even worry about it. 
Just make sure you do as good of a job at mixing as you possibly can, but don't sweat it. When the cornstarch is mostly dissolved and the cherries are glistening because they're lightly coated in honey, you know you're ready to pour this into your baking dish. So I'm just gonna grab mine back. As you can see, these cherries are filling up about two thirds of the um, height of this baking dish and that's completely fine. It really just depends on what you want. Like this is so flexible. If you wanna use more fruit, go ahead. You can fill it higher and then maybe add a little more sweetener, add a little bit more um, cornstarch. It really is up to you. So next we're going to move on to my favorite part really, which is the crumble topping. And I'm going to just spread it across. And what I'll do is leave a slight border on the outside just to leave room for evaporation so that when the water comes out of the cherries, it can evaporate a little bit. And also, so you see a little red ring around the perimeter of the crisp, so you know exactly what's hiding underneath. This coconut cherry crisp is ready to go in the oven. It's going to go in at 350 for approximately 35 minutes, but keep an eye on it. Take a look at the way the crust is browning. We want it to be a beautiful golden brown when it's finished. So if you notice that it's catching a little bit, getting too dark too fast, just put a little bit of aluminum foil, lay it right on top. So I'm gonna throw this in the oven and then we'll check back on it in 35 minutes. So this has come out of the oven. It's been out for maybe about 15 minutes. Um, I would recommend waiting a little longer it's still pretty hot, um, but I'm gonna dig in because, you know, we're losing light here. <laughs> we just had dinner, and I think we want a little bit of coconut cherry crisp. So as you can see, the top crisped up really nicely, and those cherries are beautifully soft. So you can top your crisp with whatever you want, whipped cream. I recommend coconut whipped cream. That's my favorite. Um, but in this case, especially if you're gonna have it for a brunch or breakfast even, um, some yogurt or Greek yogurt in this case. So I'm just gonna lay it right on top. A lot of yogurt. And this is optional, but as a nice finishing touch, perhaps just a little bit of honey. Because who doesn't love a nice little drizzling? If you wait a little longer for the crisp to cool down completely until it's room temperature, it won't be as runny. Okay, so I've got my test plate and I'm ready to dig in. And I want a little piece of cherry and crisp and yogurt and honey all in one bite. That's really nice. That coconut flavor is really, really strong too. I love that it just kind of works perfectly with cherries. I, I find that coconut and cherries aren't paired too commonly, but um, in this, it works really well, and I hope you give it a shot. Um, a perfect, quick, and easy weeknight dessert. I will see you in the next video. Bye. This is approximately about eight inches in diameter. Is diameter the right word? Ready?